tomorrow is my father's birthday. He'll be 95. Oh, wow. Your father's birthday is Thanksgiving? Yeah, about every seven years that happens or something. <laughs> so, what's on your mind? Anything you want to chat about? I've got a couple of things to talk about, but they're, they're not super critical. Well, anything about what we've done so far that you want to look at again, talk about some more? I was reading about the, uh, the tax cuts and stuff. Mm -hmm. The fiscal cliff that we're looking at? Yeah. It says that, in the reading, it says that the tax cuts really don't help so much as far as raising revenue. Uh huh. Then why would we keep on doing it? <laughs> You're kind of talking about the Laffer curve. Okay. Yeah, I just reading on that. I watched the video today. Yeah. Let's let's look at the Laffer curve for a minute. Can you draw the Laffer curve? Mm -hmm. right. What goes up here? Uh, marginal, tax marginal tax rates. I I'd simply say tax rates to simplify the explanation. But technically, these are marginal tax rates. Marginal means the tax rate you pay on additional dollars when you earn. Them. So that goes from zero to a hundred percent. And then what's down here? Tax revenues. Tax revenues collected by the government. And the Laffer curve, which is really representative of, of, of older classical theory, says that when you get beyond a certain point, this would be your point of maximum tax revenue. Maximum revenue. That occurs at some interest rate or tax rate uh, that we know not what. Well, we don't know what percentage. But if you raise taxes above that level, up in here, you are in what we call the prohibitive range. The prohibitive range of tax, marginal tax rates. That as you continue to raise taxes in that range, what happens? People avoid, People avoid taxes, legally and illegally. They avoid working sometimes, too. This is the argument. But at very high tax rates, you begin to ask yourself, why should I work the overtime? Why should I work a full week if I'm going to be taxed at such a high marginal rate? And if the tax marginal rate were 90%, for example, and I asked you or offered you the chance to make $500 Saturday working for me in my backyard. $500 sounds pretty good until what? Your tax. Until you pay $450 of it in tax. Do you really want to work for $50 all day? And since you're here in class, you might be the kind that would do that, but most people wouldn't. You know. It's an extra 50 bucks you didn't have. Say again? It's an extra 50 bucks you didn't have. It's still $50 more than you had, but is it worth eight hours labor? Probably not. So, we want to avoid being up here in the prohibitive range. And then along comes Reagan, and remember when Reagan comes in, the maximum marginal tax was 70%. And he said, well, that's up here somewhere. And I'm going to cut it to 50%, which I think is around here somewhere. And when I do that, what will happen? You get more revenue. A number of things. One, I will go from revenue collection level one to revenue collection level two, so I will actually collect more taxes. Now, how is that going to happen? People stop cheating as much. People stop looking for the loopholes as much. People start reporting their income, and people are more willing to work because they keep more money. All those arguments intuitively are very appealing. They were certainly appealing to me because I voted for Reagan based on that. I was relatively new here in Santa Fe. What did we find instead, though? We found that if that was indeed the 70% point, that the 50% point was probably down here somewhere. <laughs> and we didn't know that. We couldn't know that until we tried it. And if, if maybe the 50% wasn't that low, maybe the curve was shaped a little different. But the net, in, net difference was we collected less revenue. And at the same time, we were increasing spending on defense, 
We're maintaining spending on social programs, and that's when our deficits began to grow. And so your question was, if, if we see that by cutting taxes we don't really collect more revenue, why do we keep doing it? Any ideas on that? We're trying to figure out where the line actually is. Uh, I think you're very charitable, but I think that's, uh, that's certainly part of the argument, is we're trying to find out, can you drop them down low enough that it will, in fact, stimulate the economy? And uh, by stimulating the economy, and their term for that is broaden the tax base. That means have more people work and pay taxes. Um, so far, it ain't working. I guess I said somewhere or something about uh, during a recession, and it helps a little bit or something like that. Well, certainly, tax cuts can help in a recession. I, mean, I want to get into that here in a minute. But Unnecessary tax cuts. Well... We tried this with Reagan in 81, and then in 86, we reduced the maximum rate down to 28%. We tried it again with Bush in, uh, what was it, 91? Yeah. We tried it again with Bush the second, okay? And, and it just hasn't worked. Then why do we keep trying it? The answer, I think, and this is, this is very much opinion, I think the answer is political. I think that if you want people to vote for you, you promise them things that sound really good. And this sounded very logical the first time. It still sounded logical maybe the second time. But by now, most, I would say most of us, are looking at this and saying, that ain't working. And this is the essence of supply side. That if you keep cutting taxes for businesses, they'll grow. And you keep cutting taxes for individuals, they'll spend and it will stimulate the economy. And the stimulation we did get with the Reagan tax cuts, because we did get a lot of jobs created after Volcker brought down inflation, an awful lot of those jobs were very low income. And if we look at incomes over the last 30 years, the incomes of the very poor, if anything, have declined. The incomes of the lower and middle, middle class have been stagnant. Where's all the income growth come uh, occur? Up in the very high ranges. So if you argue that Reagan's program was good for the economy that created jobs, well, it sure did, but they didn't pay that much. If you argue Reagan's program was good for GDP, it was. But who, you know, to whom did that increase in growth and income accrue? And the answer was German to the rich. And they, again, this is somewhat... Uh, personal opinion and also a Keynesian view. Under a really capitalistic system as we have in the United States, which is characterized by what? Crony capitalism. You remember that term? Mm -hmm. Where wealthy capitalists tend to benefit one another. Over time, if you have very low tax rates, you see that the rich get richer quicker than the poor, and the gap between them grows. We overcame that in the 1940s, 50s, 60s because we taxed the rich at very high rates on their marginal income. And we instituted more and more social programs to help the poor. And so we, we reduced the gap in incomes, we had a much larger middle class, and we had a very robust economy. And the Keynesian view, the Democrat view today, if you will, is we need to return more to that. Um, Dr. Robert Reich, who, who writes from the liberal side, he says, we're approaching the point where businesses and wealthy individuals are taxed so lightly, wealthy individuals particularly, and the middle class wages and lower class wages are so flat that pretty soon all these businesses are going to find that paying their, their employees lower wages and keeping those wages so low, you're killing not just your employees, you're not just cutting your expenses, you're also eliminating your customers. You're reducing the spending by your customers in the aggregate. And in the long run, you're killing yourself. Of course, businesses are looking overseas for their customers more, too. Mm -hmm. So we keep trying this, I think, because it politically sounds good and it gets people to vote for it. People always like to hear lower taxes. And they love to hear lower taxes with any kind of a reasonable sounding explanation. Lower taxes will grow the economy, create more jobs. Man, the snake oil salesmen have been selling that stuff since the 1850s, right? You know what snake oil is? Okay, this is... 
Well, this is the guy who would, who would come into an old west town with a wagon, and he would basically have phony medicine cures. They called it snake oil. And you, know, you take a sip of this three times a day, and your arthritis will be gone. they sell that stuff. And what was in the bottle? Watered down liquor. <laughs> Alcohol watered down, so I had to put a bite to it. And then they were accused at times of taking snake poison and putting it in there, too. So you had all kinds of stories. But this was a, a traveling medicine show, the snake oil salesman, who was selling you stuff because it sounded like it was better than anything. And it was actually a scam. And so from the left particularly, they say, this is just a scam by the Republicans, where they keep telling you something that sounds really good, and people keep voting for it even though it doesn't happen. Now, and again, I'm, I'm giving it to you from the left side, okay? A lot of the argument is people who are voting for these kind of things are voting against their own best interest because these, these middle class voters who are voting for these programs are the ones whose wages have in fact remained flat. And they're not doing anything to improve. That, again, that's the liberal side. I think I don't go that far to the left personally, but I think there's some credence in some of those arguments. Does that kind of address the question there? You've got me thinking about how to create a discussion question using the Laffer curve now. Uh, how realistic is it that we might find that, that um, point, that middle ground right there? Well, the tax we've gone from 90 to 70 to 50 to 28 and back up now to what, 39, 36, whatever. And we have consistently collected less revenue until we went here. We were at the 39% range when Bill Clinton was president and the Republicans owned Congress. And what happened under that particular set of eight years, <coughs> Bill Clinton? We began to collect more revenue. We began to run a balance, or almost balanced budget. So I don't know where it is. Uh, this is irrelevant. That didn't help us either. I, I, don't, I don't see that reducing it below that rate gains anything. And I can't imagine that raising it above that rate. So maybe this rate here, I don't know, I'm just taking a wag, right? right. Well, I'll ask, yes, maybe that rate is around 30.